everyone. Welcome back to Creekside Maples. I'm Tony. I'm Joni. And you're down here with us at the mill. And this is episode four of Addicted, Addicted to, to Milling. Milling. So welcome back everybody. It's been a long winter and it's so good to be back down here at the mill. It is. We wanted to try to mill all winter long, but we get about four or five feet of snow here this winter. And then after we got the, all that snow, well then we got a flood mm -hmm. and all this area where the mill sets, it was all flooded. I've got a lot of damage to the road I got to prepare. But today I want to talk about basically just starting up your mill again after it's been sitting in the cold weather for a couple of months through the winter. Now if you live in a warm climate or you don't have to deal with cold weather in winter then this won't you know affect you a bit. Right. If you are in the cold weather but you have a building and a roof over your head for milling which we don't then this probably won't pertain to you either. But for those of us that our mill are, are still outside and we cover them up obviously every night with the, with the mill cover. But um, there's some things even if your mill is covered, if you don't mill through the winter. Um, here's some tips and things that uh, I find very informative, very handy to know. If you're just getting into milling, um, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. So we're going to walk through a few things that we found that uh, we like to do when we get our mill started up just after the cold winter when it's been sitting for a while. Here in Canada where we live, there is a lot of frost that gets in the ground. Now my mill is designed, I took these six by sixes and sunk them down into the ground three feet and they have concrete in them, in those holes, so it's very solid. However, you never want to assume that your mill doesn't move over the cold period, the cold weather, and then when the ground begins to thaw, because mm -hmm. honestly it does. Right. What we found out, we came out last Saturday, and I started the mill up, got everything done, and found out that my mill was off a little bit in the level part of it. Well, a lot of that was because, again, we had a huge flood here, and all this water came washing down this hill, Mm -hmm. and washed out a lot of the ground and s just saturated the ground with water. However, even without a flood, your ground is still going to heave when the frost comes out of it. Yes, it so does. the first thing that I say to do, or I find is important to do, is make sure you test the level of your bunk again. Never assume that just because it was level when you shut it off, you know, last October, mm -hmm. that now it's, it's the end of March here. Um, never assume that it stayed that way all winter long because you'll find out probably that it has moved a bit. So I spent last Saturday um, realigning my entire bunk, uh, straightening it up, leveling it, making sure it was perfect the way I like it so it cuts those really good straight boards. Some folks are saying that when you're milling, you're getting one thickness here, but by the time you get to the end of your mill, you've got a difference in thickness. And it just could be that that bunk has moved a little bit and that's what's causing you the issues. So always check those things out, make sure they're good. Your, your log stops, what I do every year, I'll take these out, I'll put a little grease on them, and then I'll take my uh, little T-handle screw here, tightening uh, screw, and I'll re-grease the threads on that. Um, for you know to start the season with my uh, dogs here these quick do uh, log dogs here I'll always take some of this silicone spray you see me in it use it before in other videos and I'll just spray that in there and I'll just work that in there a little bit because I don't want that metal you know fatigued I want it to um, be lubricated well to, to move up and down there and so I do that with all my log stops and you know, all of the dogs and everything like that, all of the things, you know, all these T-handles that go in and out, I do that so that they don't get seated in there, they don't rust in there, anything like that. Moving on from there, then I come to the mill, and 
now we've been milling all morning, so we're doing up a big order of two before, and so everything's dusty, we're dusty, but that's okay. That's what this is all about, because we're addicted to milling. But here on our mill, um, I always go and after I level everything, I make sure all these uh, leveling feet bolts are all tight and everything. One thing I check here is these little pieces of um, cable. They're just wire cable, and they clean these wheels that the head moves up and down the bunk on. You can see this one right here, it's not touching this wheel at all. So it is not cleaning the top of that um, wheel. That's the dogs growling at each other over there. So it's not cleaning the top of this. So I'm going to adjust that and put that in there and make sure, I just happened to notice that, so I'm going to uh, make sure that that there is um, doing its job. You never want to store these with your tension um, tight. You always want to slack the tension off every day. I take the tension off it every single day. The reason I do that is I don't want that blade developing flat spots or curves around the wheels inside. And so I'll always slack the tension off. And on that tensioner, I'll show you, right in here, you can take all of this out. Um, and I do, coming into a restart after cold temperatures where it's set for a few months, I'm going to take this apart and I'll re-grease that to make sure that that is, is, you know, working good, not rusting, moisture's not in there. I'll grease in here as well. And everything that's moving, all these Teflon glides, I spray this beam here with um, this silicone spray that I use. And I spray it on the corners so that I know it's getting, uh, you know, the most protection on those points that it's going to wear the most. And I just do that just to keep that uh, nice, you know, running nice and smooth up and down so it doesn't wear on the Teflon that much. Just spray those moving parts to keep them, you know, lubed for the, for the next, you know, season. And uh, so that's some of the things there. Important, change your oil. Can't stress it enough. Don't try to, and I know oil is expensive, everything is, but don't try to take the motor beyond, uh, you know, that oil, you know, date that it, that it should be changed. You're just going to damage your motor and the viscosity breaks down in the oil. And so, you know, you know, change your oil regularly the way that the book tells you to, the manual does. Now, if you're using fully synthetic, obviously, you can probably get away with less oil changes, but that, you know, that's something that you have to decide for yourself. Now, when I shut this off, it was cold weather. Now we're down into, you know, we're into March, and it's still chilly, but we have some warm days. This filter is designed on the HM126 to have a winter position and a summer position. And it's still getting down, like it's only plus three today, but you can see these stickers on here where the snowflake lines up with this arrow, and that's for winter use. But here in a few weeks when the weather starts getting warmer, I'll take this um, cover off the air filter. Now make sure you clean that air filter. I can't stress that enough. Clean that all the time. Get that dust blown out of there. And then summertime, set this back on on the summer position which is around here. So that's, you know, things like that you need to do. The stuff like, you know, your doors on these hinges. I always spray a little silicone lubricant on those. I, I, I'm just fussy that way. I like keeping these things cleaned. I really do. When I start it back up after the cold temperatures, I check this line, make sure there's no cracks in it. Uh, make sure the, if you have it in a building, make sure the mice didn't chew through it, all those sort of things. And then I'll run, oh, probably a quarter of a tank or so through this just to get it all cleaned out nice um, so I know that it's working correctly. Now, your slides and glides. Um, you've got a bearing, a roller bearing in behind your blade. If you have a saw, you know what I'm talking about. They're right in behind here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that they're clean but make sure that they're the right distance from the back of your blade as well. That's important. And then make sure these glides in here are the right distance from your blade on the top and the bottom so that you, your blade sits in there properly and it's not wearing against anything it shouldn't and it's not wearing the glides or you know, the roller bearings or the, the glides out prematurely. So things like that you need to check. 
um, to make sure they're all cleaned and ready to go. Other than that, honestly, I, I open up the doors and I check all of my, the pulleys and make sure everything's good there. Um, I check the belts, make sure that the belts are solid and ready to go for another season. I make sure I put a fresh blade on, keep everything sharp. Now you can store it, if you're going to store it, then take the blade right off. You don't need to store it with the blade on. <laughs> Some people say you've got to keep the blade on even when you're storing it. Um, no, you don't. <laughs> You, you don't have to. If you're slacking the tension off, then, you know, if you're going to put it up for the, for the winter, then take the blade off. However, that's your choice. But when you put it back on, put a good sharp one on, make sure everything, the tracking is on the way it's supposed to be, and uh, check all that stuff out. So that's just some stuff that I do. Um, you know, I make sure if you're going to store it through the winter, you can put a little bit of gas treatment in there and how, whatever you, you find at the auto shop or store or whatever, if you choose to. Mine, I, I kept running mine through the winter the best I could, but we had about a period of two months where I didn't because way too much snow. And so I just got it ready and stored it and covered it all up and everything. So that's a lot of the stuff that I do when I start, you know, the mill back up. Make sure your throttle cable is working good. I always spray lubricant in this tube. You can just unhook it hold it up, spray into it, and that keeps that, you know, lubed so it doesn't get water in there, so it doesn't uh, rust, and it doesn't stick on you. So that's just some of the things I do. Now I'm going to show you something that I just put on, you know, today, been wanting to do this for a bit, is a tow board. You know, if, if you know anything about milling, or even if you don't, a tow board, what it does is, you know, when you're milling logs, if you set the big end of the log up here, at the head of the mill, which is the best way to do it, and then your small end back here, then you know what you start with up here is not what you're going to end up with back here because you, your, your log is tapered. What a tow board does is that you can lift this end, the smaller end of the log, up so that your lev uh, milling le level across your mill bunks. All I did was I got myself a little... Um, uh, you know, Red Jack, they're, they're actually called the Red Jack, and um, I got it from actually on uh, Marketplace for 20 bucks. Uh, I just attached it onto a couple two by uh, sixes underneath my bunk, and, and then I welded a piece of steel across here. Now, I bent this steel a little bit with a little curve in it, so it kind of fits the log a little bit better. Um, and put a little backbone on it so that it doesn't bend and it stays good and solid and then I just welded it on top and all I'll do is when I want to move this end of the log up I just turn the jack up and when I want to put it down I just drop it down it works excellent and it makes for a little better milling um, so if you haven't got that and you'd like to have something like that go get yourself a jack oh you can buy the tow board if you want to and spend all that money or you can just get a good jack and it'll work so those are some things that we do um, here at our site here at Creekside Maples. So with that, I've talked enough. It's time to get some sawdust going. Time to make some lumber and get back to milling because that's what we really like to do. So thanks for watching. We appreciate y'all coming by Creekside Maples all the time. Mm -hmm. Our channel's growing. We're so yes. excited. Um, Very excited. You know, all the new folks coming on board. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It doesn't cost anything. It just helps our channel grow. And, you know, share our channel um, with your friends, you know, whatever. Just help us if you don't mind growing our channel. That's right. That's right. We appreciate you all so very much. We really do. You guys are awesome. Give us a thumbs up and leave us comments. Yes. Hit the notification bell as well. Yeah. Then you never miss anything. And you never miss. Because <laughs> we do live stream. <laughs> We're going to get back to milling, make some sawdust here, have some more fun. And thanks for watching. God bless. All this is slow motion. Oh, my God.